Thanksgiving, pedicures, and things I'll never learn. All this and more on today's Brilliant Observations. Do, 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 do. Hi, Amy. How are you? Hello, Melissa. I'm well. How are you? Well, uh oh. Um, I'm great. Uh, but I didn't travel for a Thanksgiving break, I and did. you did. I super did. I did. I did it. I did. I did a lot of it. I did the traveling. I, I'm traveled. I have so much travel coming up in the near More? in the near offing. I'm super kind of not really looking forward to it. So. The hard part about travel is all the stuff you want is someplace else. So you have to go there. And I just, that, can't we fix that part? I don't want to have to go. Did you go to Ohio Pile? No, we didn't go any of those places. What? As it turns out. Yeah. My big long week of planning and going to all the different places to make this an experience based road trip style. I've got you captive. This might be my last time. Yeah, none of it, none of it. It all fell to the ashes. None of it worked out. My favorite parts of it are rearranging the trip multiple times based on my son's college schedule, only yeah. to have classes and presentations canceled day of. Oh, shit. Happy Thanksgiving. You have until after break. Wow. Really? I delayed everything to be here for this 5.30 p.m. presentation. Departure. Six o'clock departure. Right. So as things were shifting and moving and and we were getting the gist of what was getting ready to happen. And because there is really nowhere to stay in Ohio Pilo. Yayo. Yeo. Pilo. You can't. There's nothing. When you go to Falling Water, there's nothing. You can stay at Nima Colon, which is $800 a night. You can stay at a historic Frank Lloyd Wright property for seven hundred dollars a night, or you can Holy stay, crap. or you can stay in a yurt that also is forty-one miles from where you are. So it's like there's no good option. There's no good option. Are these prices because it's Thanksgiving week? There's just nothing. There's oh, there's okay. flea bag, you know, skank, dirt lodge that Nimmy Cullen looks good, though. and then there's good places. And I don't want to pay for good places when all we, we were going to come rolling in there at 2 a.m. You kind of want to rent by the hour and at that leaving. point. And well, but, and, well, that was the other thing. We were going to be rolling in there at 1 or 2 a.m. Crazy tired. Oh, my gosh. And we the only tickets that we could get, and I had bought them long in advance for Falling Water, were at 9 a.m. the next day. So we'd be at the hotel long enough to go, did I get out of the car? And then we'd have to drive back over and walk. It just was, it was, I was forcing something that didn't need to be forced. I mean, we just didn't that's need. that's what parenting is. Well, I punted the whole thing. I said, stop. So instead, we will pick you up after your presentation, blah, 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 blah. And then that got moved and shifted. And it's like, all right, why are we leaving at 530 at night? I'll just pick you up the next morning. And <clears throat> did that. Because fortunately, his next morning class was canceled. So we, and then I thought, okay, then we'll go to, we'll go to one of my favorite museums. I haven't been there. You boys haven't been there. We haven't gone together. Let's go. Closed only on Tuesdays. That's their normal day of the week to be closed. Oh my God. I'm like, what's next? So then I thought, all right, we'll just stop in DC. We do DC all the time, but we'll just stop there. And I found this really cool place that I thought, and it's the building museum. And I thought, oh, that's awesome. And it's really more of an event venue. And it was lit up, colorful, beautiful art gallery. We'll go, we'll walk around, closed Thanksgiving week. What is next? What's next? What's next? So my I son. I know. It's like somebody so, yeah, wound you yeah, up yeah, from behind yeah. and let you run into brick wall after brick wall. <sighs> so I had the uh, youngest while we were en route. I had him pick a place for us to go because he's a foodie. Pick a place for us to go in D.C. And that's where we'll go for lunch. Traffic was so bad. Lunch became dinner. We parked in what we thought, according to our GPS and our eyeballs and our tiredness, we thought, oh, that's like a block away. We'll just park here because there's street parking. Nobody's here. Great. The downtown D.C. was deed. There was nobody there. I've never seen it like this. 
I could park on the street. It was ridiculous. So we get out and start walking and realize, thinking, oh, it's right on the corner. Great. Well, it was actually on three corners away and they're properly city blocks. So we were walking with no coats on. It was 31 degrees. Oh my God. <laughs> to the dinner. So then we sat and then I thought, not, not only is this as awful as it can get, imagine how bad it's going to be when we come out an hour and a half later <laughs> with no coat in the darker night with the coldier cold. And so we got back to the car and because we had all had all of our devices charging at the highest possible level in every conceivable port, the car wouldn't start. <laughs> I felt it coming. Her I panicked before face. you said it. I it was like, oh, no, I know it's it wouldn't start. It went, it went, it went, it went, it went, it went, Oh my God. But people love to help. What'd you do? I sat there for a minute while their eyes went big and their mouths dropped open and I said, we're just going to sit. So we sat there and I tried it three times and it didn't work. So then I rubbed the dashboard really nice. And I spoke. What'd you say though? You I have to say I the right spoke, mantra. I spoke some witchy poems Go and ahead. then I, well, the, I just, I was just, you know, giving lots of praise and affection and gratitude. We're so happy for you. You've done such a good job. I know you're cold. We're cold too. Thank you. And I put my foot just a little tiny tippy tappy on the gas a little bit. And then I sat there and I kept rubbing and rubbing and rubbing. And then I pressed the thing and the car fucking started. So off we went. She is a temperamental <laughs> bitch, huh? Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, you traveling and car problems mm -mm. go hand, hand, and hand. Mm -mm. That's three hands, by the way. It's a little disturbing. So you did make it to the great state of the first date. I made for it to every destination. I made it to every meal. I, it was all lovely. You were excited to just be a guest. How did that go? That, of course, it didn't go. I got the call. You know, while we were still en route, traveling up on Tuesday, there's been a special request. Can you make meatballs? Can you do the thing? So, I, which was fine. That's not putting on the whole damn meal. So, um, I did do that and it was nice and delightful and fun yes so for thanksgiving dinner how many meatballs do you make and i'm asking because my sister-in-law makes banging like amazing sweet and sour meatballs for thanksgiving and there's never enough well these were just appetizers so you kind of want them to not be enough so judging from my sister got everything in advance she was like i, I said do you want me to bring the ingredients do you want me to what do you want and she's like no i'll have everything here if you can just do them and i said okay what time is the oven open what time is the range top Available. open right so right judging from the visual that i saw it was probably two pounds of meat so not much not not very much at all that's not a lot no but really you want everybody to have one maybe two because they're going to sit down and eat a feast that my sister has prepared that Gourmet Magazine, excuse me, Bon Appetit, is coming to photograph. Don't eat that yet because they're here, Kojina. guys. Oh, my God, you guys. Well, it's so good. She lives, she literally lives at a museum anyway, which is the craziest thing ever. She truly rents a property on at a museum. Her husband is the chief you know, runsy, the thingsy thing. And they had one of the historic houses was falling into disrepair. And they decided, well, we need somebody to be like a caretaker. What can we do? Can we, should we like rent it out? And my sister said, oh, oh, hello. Would you like me to stay in the historic train station that doesn't actually rent out to anybody else on this rolling estate that has its own zip code? It makes for a nice Thanksgiving backdrop. How was your Thanksgiving? Did you give thanks? I was thankful that we were together with my husband's whole family. Um, yes, it was lovely. My in-laws flew up and stayed with us for a couple of days. Wow. And we had we had Thanksgiving. But I think I mentioned before that I was, when I go places, I make kugel. It's what I do. It's what I do. It's what I'm known for because I don't, I give blood and, and I, I, I make kugel. And I give kugel. Yeah. Right. So that's, those are my kugel things. and my blood. Yes. Yes, yes, that's it. yes. These are good things. Well, when my sister-in-law said to my question, what can I bring? What can we bring? She said, nothing. I think we have everything. I think it was a little pass passive aggressivity going on with the last year. Nobody had Thanksgiving. We didn't go anywhere. But previous years, we would always go to Florida because my kids were off and we were off. And you had a place I had there. Yeah. And we had a place that was free to us and we took advantage of that every year. So 
the family gathering that we normally have went on without us. We just were, you know, having a sweet tea till our teeth fell out kind of Thanksgiving. And we loved it. I think little you're never here. I don't count on you for a dish kind of thing is how I heard it. But I said, well, I can bring a kugel. And I also saw this thing on TikTok. It's a corn dish that I want to try. And she's like, well, I don't need a kugel. But if you want to try that, I corn don't what? Dish. I'm sorry. I, I felt a slap come from my hand all the way through the I, hang on. Yeah. They were making mac and cheese like they had a new recipe, something for mac and cheese. So they didn't want more noodles there. So they said, no, I don't I don't need a I don't need a kugel. So I made a corn dish, which for me was I saw this on TikTok. It looked fantastic. And it was a hit. (gasps) Tell me everything right now. Right now. No, I mean, that's go on TikTok, man. It's like a four ingredient. It was so good. There are four ingredients. You need to spill it. Let's go. Corn. <laughs> that jiffy, that hey, jiffy cornbread mix. Melissa. Corn. <laughs> Thanks. That's been cooking cream. with Melissa. Cream corn. <laughs> that is all. Like it what was. What do you do? So what? You t- open up two cans of corn, one corn and one creamed corn. And then what do you mix in with it? There's two other ingredients. You teased me with more. They're eggs. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay. Lots of eggs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all your eggs. Yeah. And there's got to be sugar. There's the mix, the Jiffy mix. I love that. There's tons of sugar in that. I love those Jiffy cornbread mixes. They're a delight. And then I put a quarter cup of sugar in Cause there. Because you're a smart person. That's what you're supposed uh, to and do. everything's better with. Oh, and some, melted, and some melted butter. And so you bake it and then you, you bake the shit the out of it. in your mouth and then you rub your stomach and lay down on the ground, it sounds like. I mean, my father-in-law said that was my favorite thing <gasps> at Thanksgiving dinner. See. And I said, I are you kidding? You. I told you. Are you, you kidding? Fuck you, Kugel. I mean, I love and, Thanksgiving. <laughs> and my sister-in-law worked so hard to do this incredible meal. And for him to say that, I was like, all right, I don't need to bring my I Kugel. Told you. Okay. I told you. Now I make two things. <laughs> I told you. I told and with those ingredients, you. dear listener, you can make it too. Did you bring a meal I to did. Thanksgiving, I which did. was a hit? Did you have a meal that fucking sucked? Give us a... A typey typey brilliant observations at gmail.com and let us know what's your favorite favorite part of eating we didn't get to anything else of eating at thanksgiving was and your least favorite part like Uh-oh. did she forget an ingredient in that nonsense oh man oh man what about you aim well the second third i've lost count thanksgiving was at nana's house and nana does a wonderful job of visiting all of her people. So it's it's not really her deal to cook. And we've worked this out over the years. And now this year we got our smartest ever. And we pre-ordered everything from Wegmans. Love it. I've never even thought of this before. Pre-ordered everything from Wegmans. Wegmans is, if you don't know how good they are, they're, they're imagine the best possible experience and then multiply that by 2,000. Not only did everything come completely packaged, ready to go. They present you with a sheet of paper that has a grid on it. So it says, it's like looking at ways. What time would you like to eat? If you want to eat at this time, here's what you do with the bink-a-bunk-a-bink-a-bunk, everything that you bought. So they say, set the temperature of the oven at this, at this time. And then there's a grid. And then you can say, okay, well then if that's happening at 410, you need to put the dressing in and then at 425 you need to put the butternut squash in and then bing 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 and then you take the thing out and then you do the oh my god why have we not been doing this this whole time it was it was all good fantastic it started in um greater new york where my husband went to school and he'd always bragged about it and when it came down here wegmans is the kind of place that not only gives you minute by minute instructions how not to fuck up Thanksgiving. But if there's a product that you've heard of that is not in their store, and I'm sure I'm sure Jansen's does this. I'm sure other supermarkets do. But if you go to their counter, they're now your partner in discovery, finding, rooting out, and having a delivery for you where they will call you when you're a specific no sugar soda or yogurt or Greek, whatever, whatever it is that you were a pain in the ass about or rats. They my are like built carry for it. pains in the ass and they, they seem are. to like it, right? Because I'm not they a, seem happy about well, it. Well, I'm yeah. not a pain in the ass, but I'm, I, I, I mean, if I am, they've hidden it well, but I don't get 
pain in the ass vibes from other people telling me I am. So when I go in there, I'll ask these questions and to me, I'll think, you're getting ready to be a pain in the ass. So just try to be kind about it, right? And as I'm starting to load it up, they're already, nope, that's fine. Like, we, this is so basic. This is rudimentary ass pain. We've got that solved. Like, this is the Isle of Ass Pain. You're set, lady. Like, they, it's it's as if it's kind of silly that they think that my giant ass pain is going to be a problem. So The Isle of Ass Pain. Yes. Wow. They got a whole aisle for it. And it's seasonal, too. So I'm just here. That might jam. be our show title. What was your favorite, favorite, favorite I went back for thirds? I went back for thirds. It was probably, oddly, the Brussels sprouts. Oh, that's not oddly. Those are awesome. How'd she make them? Well, Norm, you would figure that you'd know how to make some food. So my sister made broiled Brussels sprouts with pancetta, which, of course, so it's a nice crispy, you know, smoky, fat, kind of bacony flavor is in there. And that normally would be good enough. But she also had roasted some chestnuts. And thrown those in Chestnuts there. Chestnuts roasting on an open And there was fire. something red. I don't remember if it was like a pomegranate or there were so many things on the plate. I don't remember if it was pomegranate or if it was uh, like those little areoles of pomegranate or if it was cranberries or what. But there was little red studs in there. But between the soft sort of meaty, delicious yumminess of the chestnuts and then the broiled, crispy, crunchy of the Brussels sprouts and then the bacony pancha. Oh, my God. Yum, 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 yum. Every time. I will take that every, every time. It was so good. It was so good. That's one of my favorite. And as a child, I'm like, ew, that's gross. As a grown up, I'm like, give me more. I can't get enough of it. Did you have anything at Thanksgiving that besides your spoon or we should call it ladle bread? We should call it, we should call it uh, (laughs) trough bread. Corn pone. Corn. (laughs) Because you put so much of it in your face. Corn pudding bread. Corn bread. Corn Cornness. That's what it is. It's cornness. What did you do for desserts? What was your dessertage? So when we go anywhere as a family, we leave three dogs behind. So we can't really stay forever. Dessert was super fast for us. They had, well, they had a really big challah that I could have eaten alone and had just that for lunch and dinner yeah. and dessert and been super happy. Bread is kind of my my porn like bread is definitely how I find joy but there was also somebody made brownies there I didn't really see pies maybe there's an apple pie might have been from Costco I don't know somebody made brownies I found a corner I sat in a corner I ate the corner and then I went back to the dog 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 dog. yeah pretty much bread holla our bread game this year was really weak really weak you usually have uh crescent rolls yep by the palate yep and nobody so made had- a single fucking one. Nobody made a single fucking one. And it's probably for the best because when there are crescent rolls, my boys will eat them and nothing else. So, I mean, my sister has her cocktail dinner party game down. You're going to drink her signature cocktail on arrival. Don't add, don't tell me whatever your drink is. You're drinking this. Then you're going to eat the plates that I put in front of you. I mean, so she's got it staged where you might want another meatball, but there aren't any more because you're going to want the next thing that's coming that you don't and know about. And she's moved on, right? And she's moved next. on. So there was not a single bread at her whole thing. I mean, I guess you count the, the stuffing that was there, but there was not a single bread. Not a single bread. Not a single bread. I don't know what to make of that. There were flatbreads with the cheese board in the beginning. So, I mean, you got that. And then the, well, the desserts that came out. If you had eaten bread, oh my God, I think this was her best year of desserts ever. And I wish I could remember what the hell we were calling it because she made this kind of a tart with every conceivable fall, crunchy, soft, cooked, baked kind of a fruit that all worked together in an equally sized cut crumble on the top. So it was equal pieces of that crumble top, which is just sugar, right? Or, oh, maybe that's an apple. Oh, maybe that's a piece of plum. Oh, maybe that's something else that's delightful. Oh, wait, no, that's this magnificent butter crust. It, you just want to, I swear to you, it was so good. Okay, now I'm drooling. So and I have good. hours before I can eat today. So thank you so much for that. Oh, no, I know. Well, I can, I can give you another Thanksgiving surprise if you want. This was my favorite a surprise. one. We had a Thanksgiving surprise. So at Nana's house, as we're sitting there enjoying, and we're all going around the table, and it's been a long time since we've all been around the table. And she says, I just need everybody to catch us up. Can we just do that? Can we just talk? And I thought it was going to be the, what are you thankful for? Nope. It was, it was the job interview. 
tell me a little about you. And we went around the table and everybody had to do the tell me a little about you's. I thought you were going to tell me somebody was pregnant. Go ahead. Well, we had the college kid tell us that I'm no longer playing hockey because I got cut from the team and I'm really kind of sad about it. And I'm like, oh my God, this is awful. And then I've also applied. I've also applied that I want to go to Ecuador and work with people and help them do sustainable farming. I'm like, weren't you a finance major? Like, when did you turn into a... So the whole thing, I'm like, I'm like, what? So we're listening to all this stuff going around, going around. I, I bought a different car. It's in the street. Let's go look at it. Yay, yay. All this kind of stuff, this and that. Kids talking. I'm doing this. I'm starting a new job in January. Oh, my gosh, everybody. Oh, a little this stuff. And so it comes around to Nana. And she says, well, I have made the decision that I'm going to move into an assisted living facility Whoa. after the first of the year. So if anybody has any tips for downsizing a big house, you let or me Or anything you, you want from my house. No, you let Put your me sticky pad know. on it now. It was like, what? So it was a weird, weird one to have that kind of thing float out. And it didn't float out like, I'm really excited. It was like, no, I just feel like this is what I want to do. It's time. This is what I want to do. So it seems like a weird way to learn that information. And it didn't, it didn't seem like this was something that we've all been waiting for. Yeah. Assuming yeah, was yeah, coming. yeah. Yeah. It's like, it, you know, we're engaged because we've been dating for 10 years. Right. I mean, it's right. like, you've been living point, independently with no issues. All of a it's sudden a little you've decided, bit, well, it's a little bit like, hi, I'd like you to meet my boyfriend. And then an hour later and we're engaged. Yeah. I mean, it just felt like that. I was like, surprise. It's such a huge thing. And I want to wish her success, but I also, I'm sad. I don't want that to happen. It's sad for that transition because it's not going down the street. It's If she finds a good place, does she know where she's going? She's, she has located a place that she's interested in and it's about an does hour. she have friends there? It's an there? hour and a half away. It's an hour and a half away. I think she might, she either has a friend there or she felt like she's toured it a number of times and the community felt Fits. felt like it was a good place for her to go. So we're doing the same thing with colleges. If she found a place right, that fits, right. maybe that's why she chose to do it now and not two years from now because she found a good place. Hey, I'm coming out to support her. I'm a big fan of figuring out what's right for you and taking the next step to do it. The hard part is taking those steps and good for her telling the whole family so it doesn't get the scuttlebutt treatment <laughs> as it goes from family member Indeed. to phone call to text. Did you know that? She pulled it like that band aid off right in front of everybody. That was super smart. Super smart. I heard this weekend that from my mother that my their neighbor, my parents' neighbor, said to my mother, wow, since your dog died six months ago, your husband's really gone downhill. Oh, what? He used to walk the dog three times a day, long walks and stayed healthy, and he's not walking anymore, and, is, and he just is, my parents are going downhill. But it was nice of her, their neighbor to come out and say, Damn, girl, your husband looks shitty. He should. He's not even walking upright anymore. Yeah, it was a tough one to hear yesterday. I'm unaided, unrequested. Just, oh, yeah. Just I didn't know. Just volunteers you, this. After 75, didn't we talk about the, the filter their falling off? filter if they ever had one. Or the filter becomes a megaphone for every internal thought. Blah set to blast that's even worse yep. than losing your filter because nobody has to ask you you're just <laughs> shouting it out and, uh, sorry oh my god what did yeah. you say you know I, i'm always against them getting another dog because clearly it could outlive them but if they went and they rescued a i don't know eight-year-old dog it would be a uh, geriatric whatever for both of them and i i think that might not be such a bad idea it would keep them out and moving but also so, so dogs are always the answer for you doesn't matter I, what the question is i think dogs yes are the answer <laughs> it's easy to say how many times have you said i'm gonna work out and then you don't because you only answer to you but if you have a sweet face looking up at you even if it's raining even if it's like you're still gonna have to go outside you're gonna put on a raincoat you won't melt only witches melt so only I would melt. So I think that it might be the answer. I'm trying to think, you know, my husband's joke of the two reasons in the emergency department not to give a rectal is one, the doctor has no finger, or two, the patient has no ass. You're gross. 
Every there time. are really only two excuses not to have. I can't think of two not to have a dog. Like they're, you're horrible people. That's one. <laughs> and <laughs> and oh, uh, yeah, I, they're just, they make everybody's lives better. So why? I just didn't want to deal with. Two aging parents and an aging dog of theirs, and and that's the age is the yeah. right mix for them. It's the right zone for them, but taking care of something else would probably kill them anyway. So, I don't want another dog. I don't want another dog. Say it again. I, I was just giving you a little breath on each side of that, so we could make that a drop because I love it when you lie and you pretend it's true. Those I don't are- want another dog, but I would rescue another <laughs> dog. So, what do you think the difference is with those two sentences? Well, I, did, I never wanted a white dog. My dogs roll around outside. They, I, I don't want to have to clean a dog. When a dog needs you, you can't pick and choose what it looks like or what it... I just you, you, take you can, whenever... But you can. But but you can. <laughs> but you but you. But not you in can. rescue. It's not you, what's convenient for you. It's who needs you and when they need you. There's always someone who needs you. There's always a dog who needs you. There's dogs who need you right now. They're, I know. I'm, Don't I'm, talk I'm about it. Say, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. We were talking about something worse before we got started. I'm going to say it right now. There are dogs who will die today because you Why do you not gotta help them. Why you got to be so rude? That's a fact. You got to accept the world you live in. You can't save I think all it's the dogs. A no, I think it's a no euthanized Sunday. Or is that cyber? Wait, what has that go? <laughs> yes, it's cyber. We're going to stop killing the dogs for one day to give thanks. And then on Monday, it's back to the incinerary. I I have cognitive dissonance on this. I have definitely put this in a box. I have, I mean, there are there are people who die every day. There are That's dogs. True. Who, yeah, That's I got right. it. Happy it's, Thanksgiving. The, the world is a terrible, <laughs> terrible place. Not walking upright, going into homes. Yep, it's more. Yeah, killing I mean, chickens, all of it. Wh- what do you? What, we all did start it. talking all about it. killing all chickens. Of it, all of it. All of it. Oh my lord, my yeah, lord. Yeah, shitty, shitty, shitty. But I made a banging corn pudding. I'm gonna and make that. It sounds corn like those pudding. I am Brussels make sprouts it. are next. They on really my list were. As well. They really were. And I was always like, "What are you doing with the chestnuts?" She's always sneaking chestnuts into a lot of shit. But it was good. It was. It was. I. It was an amen. I worth it. I like water chestnuts. If those were in there, I would mm-hmm. do that too. Yeah. Those are. Those are. Gives awesome. it a whole new flavor. I'll say. Gives it a whole new flavor. So that was Thursday. Friday came along, and I wondered who's out shopping on Black Friday. My poor I know people nieces. who go. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to cut you off. My poor nieces, I, I refer to them as my poor nieces because why are they doing this to themselves? They have made it their tradition. They they do the thing. They get up at three o'clock in the morning and they go out and they meet their friends and they do all the stupid. They don't even need anything. They're not doing oh, it. Oh, that's funny. You know, it's not like they're tradition. Are, yeah, this is this is a high schooler and a college kid. This is not because they're you know, trying to stretch the dollar or because they want the TV that they couldn't otherwise get. It's or what they do. It's for the phenomenon. They're basically walking around and getting, getting, getting I don't know, hectic. sparkly unicorn coffees or whatever people get. I don't know what they do. I don't know why. I don't understand it. And I kept trying to tell them because they even said it was getting to be about 830, 845. And they're like, yeah, we got to get up. We got to go. And I'm like, are you kidding? You're planning. You're manipulating your life around this. Gals, gals. Stop it. I don't I don't I don't do all that stuff. I don't like it. But I did benefit, surprisingly, from a black cyber small sh- shatty sh- shatty 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 shatty. Can you tell me that again? From what did you benefit? A big shatty shatty, a big shatty cyber shatty, small. Shatty 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 shatty. I what couldn't the fuck? I didn't realize yeah. that even that, words. that even hoteliers <laughs> get in on this nonsense. I have some travel coming up. There's always travel coming up. And just looking ahead to, all right, this thing, that thing, the other thing. I popped on 50% off flash sale at a nice place. 50% off is a lot of off. It's a lot of off. I was very excited to make this. I just never thought that hotels, I mean, normally, I mean, at a certain point, does everybody have to have a Black Friday something? Like, how do you stay in business if you put your stuff in, in half price but you only do it for 39 hours like stop what are we doing who's talk got it out what are you doing anyway so i benefited screw them if they're gonna be that dumb i did it i bought it i I did it it. i did it i want some more of it well just it frustrates me because it makes me think okay well then why would i ever pay full price for something ever again because they don't do this normally i don't know 
Anyway, so you're not one of these, I must, I must, I must empty my wallet today. Bye, 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 bye. Yes and no. Like I get excited by, uh, not in a store. I won't go anywhere. Don't be crazy. <laughs> you are Although still I, Melissa. I did go to Thanksgiving though and there were there were some people there. I was they surprised. Were, I was surprised. They were all very vaccinated, but there were some people there. Uh, before I you avoided- tell me about your, before you tell me about avoiding all the sales, listen, how is it that you have in-laws staying with you, but then you all drive to somebody else to host the meal? Like, why don't they stay with that other person? Is it because they're splitting up the, the, the inconvenience of it or whatever you call? Um, that other person it's now. It's not the right word. The words escape me. She downsized to a townhouse oh, from the okay. big house where she raised her family and her sons came in. And when they come in, they fill up the house. They fill up the townhouse. So we, I told you, all we have is room. I get it. But it's at the same time, it's also like, I don't know why you're not hosting it. Even people could bring the food to you. How do you not know why I'm not hosting People could it? bring the food to you. You have all the space. Like, I don't get if you have all the space. I think my sister-in-law loves hosting. Perfect. I'll start there right, by saying this good. is. That's her deal. She's always said, this is my holiday. I do Thanksgiving. And I said, and I don't, any excuse. I, I don't need a kogo. That's what exactly what she said. Yeah. We've never had it before. I don't know why you would think we need it now. I'm like, well, I've never come before. I have. We have came. We went for years. Uh, but she did. She likes hosting it. It's kind of like me and giving blood. It's kind of like, that's what I do. So as long as she's enjoying it and she knows her kids will come home if she hosts it. <laughs> if we host it, who knows if her kids will come home. Mine will, but I don't. And I don't want people in my house. I'm a terrible hostess. Stuart's great. You're such a conundrum. You're, 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 you're. Don't buy a place with all the space if you're not going to fill it no, with food and people. No, you constantly are welcoming people and saying, this is the place, this is the place. And then you'll say something like, but I don't want you here. But you act like you want us there. Well, you're, you're talking about my people. You're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, you're, it's a different animal altogether. I see. You're talking about you. Oh. You're always welcome here. Well, I, okay. Well, good. Good, good. Um, unless you're going to go to South Africa and pick up the Omicron variant. <sighs> oh, which is 500 times more Do we more need to deal with another and- fucking thing? Do we just need it? To- well, it's all it's here forever now. I right. mean, you didn't Correct. you didn't stop going out of your house when Zika was here. And here's a pro tip. Zika is still here. Did you forget? Like it didn't, we didn't just eradicate and magically cure Zika. We just decided you're going to die from something else today. I mean, that's how it works. Now we're on the chronic. The shit's here. It's not going away. Now we're what? On the chronic. It's here. Why are you looking at me like I'm crazy? Because that doesn't just mean it's here forever. It, chronic is also a, a weed reference that I am pretty sure you didn't get, as you said. No, I think I do. It, you, we're on it. We're going to be with it forever. It's not ever going Okay, away. but if you're on it, you care much less about Zika. I'll tell you that uh, right that now. That could be true. That, the that could be true. That could I have be had true. a full house for a week, and I kind of love it. What I don't love is that well, I'm ready for bed at 9, 30, 10 o'clock, and that's when kid one is like coming home from meeting someone, and kid two takes the car and disappears at that hour. I would never have gone to my parents' house and started going out at 11 o'clock at night. To me, it seems a little disrespectful. To me, it seems, I mean, if my dogs wake up when you come home, I'm going to kill you. Did you ever go to your parents' house after you didn't have to live with your parents? I went with a family. I went with my family. I went back for after college for like reunion, not reunions, but Thanksgiving. I went back for Thanksgiving for a few years. All right. Okay. And their rule was, you're home by midnight. And I don't really have that rule. My rule is, respect me, asshole. That's my rule. And when that's not even being met, I, I, I don't know. Although I did take the boy out for a pedicure. Oh, did which you? Which he loves. Did we you both now? Did very you now? ticklish. So okay. the girls who do it absolutely love watching the two of us roll around in that massage chair that's off and freak out. Who in your family gets a pedicure? Uh, the middle one has in his life gotten them, but he I can't convince him to go with me anymore. He goes with his friends now. I think he's in a stage where Does he's he? like, I don't do it. Not on any kind of regularity. It's just I've seen him come home like once with painted nails. And I was like, what's this? What's going on here? And he's like, well, what? <laughs> uh, uh, uh. And then it never happened again. And so then I would invite him and say, okay, would you like to? I'm, I'm, my brain is going back to the painted nails episode. No. 
So I don't understand what's happening with him. They don't really. And the youngest will probably never, ever, ever participate, even when it's probably great, which is weird because he's open to so many experiences. But I can hear him going, nah, bro. Like I can hear the nah, bro already. And I'm kind of over the bro. I don't like being referred to as a bro, but I am. I'm the bro. I've transitioned from mom and merm and mama. Now I'm bro. Yeah. Well, happened. you live in a very testosterone house. So. I sure do. Brick bros. Everything is a bro. Yeah. No. You uh, sent me a picture of a haircut you were going to get. I, I, I know you got a haircut, I, but you also came to record with a very wet head. I, what are we looking at? Well, I mean, I feel like we just glossed over your son's pedicure. I'll happily tell you about my hair. But was there no more? Did you get an OPI? Did he get some kind of a spine, Just a spine, quick buff, spine so tingling, shiny. arch twisting fingernail in between the Just cracks shiny of the with toes? The buff. Okay, they were good to him. Buff, they weren't buff. as good to me. Buff, 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 buff. I got a haircut, and I had she was. I sent it to her picture, sent the picture to her in advance, so that she would not be caught off guard, and she went and researched and figured out all these different things because she came up with what she thought the color would be and then talked to one of her gurus and he said, yes, that would be the color. So she was very excited and whatever. Okay, great. I didn't realize it was going to take this much involvement. But anyway, she took the top of my head and like dunked it in India ink black color. Like it's very, very, it's super, it's so much darker than my regular hair color. So my hair goes from very, very dark at the top of my head to gradually lighter. It's called an ombre. Well, you'll post a picture of what it looks like. I when almost it's done, did when I, I walked see. out of there. I almost did when I walked out of the salon, but it really doesn't look anything at all like the woman in the photo because she's got, you know, she's had some stylist sit there and, and delicately curl. Straighten. I've got to, I've got to straighten my hair and then curl it. And that's such a ridiculous thing to do. But when I do, Looks like a million dollars. I just don't. Million dollars. I just don't do it. I'm sitting here with what we call mermaid hair right now, which is the boink, 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 the crazy tight ringlets. And they're all dark instead of being all light. I did my hair. I will post a picture. Thank you. It's a lie, but I'm happy to lie to you. Everybody else does. Okay. There you go. So you commented about things on YouTube videos that you could learn to do anything, but you don't. I have been knitting for years. I've, I made scarves and hats. I, I gave them as gifts. I sold them for a while. This year, I'm not selling them. I've made a conscious effort to tell the woman who usually sells them, uh, they didn't really sell so much last year. I think we're done with that unless I do something totally different. So then I started with a crochet needle to do a row. I think there's more flexibility in crocheting. You can do more interesting things. I watched a video and cannot figure out after casting on one whole row how to move to the second row. Shit, that's a problem. And that means I can't reverse it and go a third row. I can't, I can't, I can't. I don't know what I'm doing. And I got frustrated. I threw it across the room. I watched three videos. What are you not doing that you would like to learn from YouTube? For me, crochet. Well, I feel you with the whole knit one, pearl two, throw across the room. I get that. I can do that. That I can throwing, I can do. I, for some reason, I've stumbled into video Instagram. I go on Instagram. The reels, yeah. And it just wants to show me videos all the time. And I don't know who they think I am because they get me, but I don't, I'm not that person. They showed me, I watched for probably four minutes a video of how to stitch up, blind stitch up the side hem of a pair of jeans. So if you get a hole in the pair of your jeans, you can stitch it in such a way where that little gold thread goes back in and looks exactly like they were never ripped and they came from the jeaner. They were perfectly gold threaded. I've never, it was unbelievable. They had a hidden red stitch that they were going like doink, 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 and then they would pull it once and the whole thing would go like a zipper. They had made these yeah, I've stitches. Yeah, I've seen videos like that oh where you God, go and then oh you pull God, it. Oh my God, it was like a dream. And I just kept watching it. And I was like, I don't have holes in my pants or red thread or even needles or the skill or the time or the inclination to ever do it. And I'm going to watch. Those last three, skill, time, inclination. I'm going to watch this video eight times. And now that I did it, then they're showing me cake decorating videos. So now I get to see how people are decorating cakes that I'm never going to decorate. 
with all the special tips and flaps and flirts and flirt, 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 flirt. And you laugh at me about being on TikTok. But TikTok is for crazy people. In this case, they're showing Half of the stuff. videos you're watching no, are no, TikTok no, videos no, that no. are reels on Instagram. No, this is valuable content. Oh, this my God. Valuable <laughs> Shut this up. Valuable content. <laughs> valuable content. And it's finding me because they know that somewhere in my brain is an empty room waiting for this information to just be stored away for the one day when I need to pull it out and have it, right? I'm going to need that gene so Did you video. file it or is it gone? I'm super lost it. And then the day okay. that I want it, I won't be able to find it. That's my storage method. But having watched it eight times, I'm pretty sure I'm now a seamstress and can do anything. That's the truth. And then I'm not. It's very frustrating. I think that's how Dak Shepard lives. Like he's, <laughs> I, I listened to a couple of his podcasts and he's like, no, no, all I have to do is read it or watch a video about it and I'm all over it. He's like finishing furniture. That's what I've watched a lot of lately. People going yard sailing slash to store consignment shops, getting old and telling you what to look for, how the joints meet, how all this stuff on furniture, and then redoing it, taking it home, sanding it. I'm like, I'm out. Yes, I watch. I can you change sand the it. poles. Mm -hmm. I could probably even add putty and sand down that spot. But when you take out that electric sander. I mean, it's going to be particle board by the time I'm done. It's I'm not a it's not for me. Well, I mean, it's just a lot of effort. I want it dust, to be me. And there's dirt. And it's, 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 uh, I want it to be me, though. I want, the I want to do to that be finished and then I can have it. That's what I want. No, I, I want to make it. Then you could do it. It's not. Difficult. I cannot. No, it's not difficult. You just choose not to sand. It's not difficult in the slightest. You could do this. You could do this. You, I have confidence in you. You want to talk me through that? You I, could I do don't this. believe you could do that there is ability or like I would love to take a I don't I don't want an, a side table for your couch. Like I just a just a regular dresser, take off, take out all the drawers, re putty sand, the sand. I don't know what number sandy thing to put on there. How do you know when it's flat enough if it's all the right whatever and then to seal it or to stain it and then seal it and then put fun new vagina knobs from Wayfair on there. Like I would love to do that. What's the problem? I don't have any of the tools. The same reason I don't tools. cook. You don't I don't have the, the tools. tools. You don't need the tools. It's, I feel like you lack only the inclination. You don't need the tools. You don't need I think tools. Drive and attention span are also missing. Those, those are big ones. Those are the hurdles. <laughs> Those are the hurdles. I see a partially sanded dresser in your future that will remain so until discarded. That's what I, I see. I three letters for you. A D D. Like that's <laughs> I get super excited about a new project. I buy all of the equipment and then I just sit there and I look at it. I'm like, I was super motivated on Thursday. You don't need all you don't need equipment. All you need is a little bit of sanding paper, and they even sell them in like a block, right? And then you just rub it until it's soft. You could even skip the sanding entirely if you wanted. They now have spray paint that goes in every color, and they have some designed to go onto any surface. So you don't even have to rough it up. So it could be a smooth surface. You don't have to sand they have, it first. They have some that'll go directly on plastic. So if it's going to stick to plastic, it'll, oh, stick, so like Ikea it'll, stick, to your, it'll stick to your laminated, whatever. Dear listener, do you have projects that you want to start, that you have started, that you have let fall by the wayside, that mock you as you walk past them in the basement, the garage? Dear listener, let me know. Find me on... Instagram and Twitter, Listen Brilliant on Facebook at Brilliant Observations or Brillob Squad, Brilliant Observations at gmail.com. Once again, please let us know what motivated you the first time. How did you lose motivation? You don't really need to describe that one to me. I live it. What's mocking you? I have on the other side of the room crochet needle sticking out of the blinds ah, and ugh. yarn hanging down from there. I got a lot of mockery going on. I've started puzzles. In the dining room. Okay. All right. Put together nice. the That's entire nice. perimeter. I'm looking at it. The edges look good. One edge is missing. It's, that's mocking me a little. I'm not going through that box again without dividing it. I'm putting it all back in the box. Like three days have passed. I'm no longer interested in this steal your face that's sitting on my dining room table. What is mocking you? Amy, what's mocking you? Well, there's always writing. <laughs> <laughs> 
don't forget, I'm a don't, writer. Don't forget, don't forget all the writing that I'm not doing. My friend of me. Good for you. you. You're still going to a, a million person concert, aren't you? I'm Are you ready to, for that? I'm not. I'm going to a million person everything. And I've gotten to the point where I now just ask everybody when I arrive. We've been traveling through multiple states and there's various degrees of facial undress and you never know if it's because someone's making a statement or if it's that's the norm yeah so I'm going to lots of places and having the mask with me and people are compliant to whatever they're told to do but I don't necessarily love this new variant coming along but there's going to be a variant to that variant there's going to be a variant to that variant to this variant on top of the an undervent a subvent all they're undervent they're coming Rebranding astrology. Oh my God. You're not really a big numerific person, are you? With all the, the, you do. That's Jessica, not me. I know that. I'm not, I'm not suggesting I don't know it, but I'm, I'm really trying to dig a little deeper there. How hard do you laugh at people who are big into, (laughs) into that kind of stuff? Truthfully, I'm just curious because I think most of us laugh a little bit, but the real question is how hard do you, and then some of us, Get offended is the wrong word. Get um, Carrie's freaked out by things. That's the I'm trying to figure out how to frame it. And Carrie was the person I was thinking about. It's not so much even freaked out. It's like uh, I'm not going there. Like you know, it's like me in horror movies. I know that that's bad for me. I don't want to touch it. I don't want it in my life. And I would be much happier if it was not a part of anyone's lives on this planet. That's how I feel about horror movies. And that's how she feels about astrology in general. Like we the psychic the gods, the right, psychic right, right. gods, yeah. She wasn't having any part of it. Um, I don't know. I feel the same way about religion. If this is something that works for you and you're not pushing it on me, you are welcome to believe in any fairy princess. You, pe- There are Disney adults. I Need I say more? You can believe whatever you want to believe. You can clap for Tinkerbell. You can do all of the things. Um, but it's it's not for me. But, I know me. All right. But what happens when you do it and the con works? When you do, you you stand on the thing, you look right, you pick up your pinky and you blink four times and then they give you your reading and it, it nails you so perfectly and it nails you uniquely in a way that it wouldn't work. Like if I was standing next to you, you couldn't just hand yours to me and then I could see how this mattered to me as well. Do you know what I mean? It's like somehow unique to you. What now? What now? Because I know it's all a con. I know it's all ridiculous. It's all based in generalities that are effectively true for some people at some time. But the reason I'm mentioning all this is because in a professional women's group for women in business, somebody was saying, are there anyone, is anyone here interested in human design? I'd love to apply human design to my business. And I'm like, what the fuck's human design? And I figured it was a new coaching thing. So I was like, run, run. Like, I don't want to do any of this coaching stuff. But meanwhile... Human design, when I, I was like, I, I just looked it up to know what these people were talking about. It's just astrology again. You enter your birth date and the time that you're born and they will uh, tell you what was in retrograde and where the they give you, they give you, an a, you, they give you a kind of a, a 20 million point. I didn't get into it that deeply, but it'll assign you in these different, it's, it basically works closer to Myers-Briggs than it does to other things. So all of them, Clifton Strengths, Myers Briggs, um, Enneagrams, they're all the fucking same. But anyway, this one was hilarious to me because I really was curious if you would do it and see what you got because I kind of feel like they put a lot of energy, whoever came up with this shit, they put a lot of energy into making this thing work. And I don't know, I felt like, I felt like it was, I got one that was really, um, there aren't very many. They classified like the majority of people fall or, you know, there's, there's these different categories and the majority of the people are in this one. It's called a generator, right? But I was a manifester, whatever the fuck that means. And that's like the smallest category of the people you'd be able to like, oh, okay, now I'm interested. I'm in a tiny group. You think I'm special? Tell me now. No, it gets even worse. It gets even worse because the name that I got for this thing, yeah. they give you a they give you a number. I'm a six two for those of you who are, you know, gonna be able to tell me what the fuck this is. 
I'm a six two <laughs> manifester with emotional. My intuition is emotional. And so the title for what I am is called the exemplary human. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I wonder if there's one in there for like the shit ball. Like I just wonder how ridiculous. There's got to be. You're Send the me a devil, link. devil incarnate. It's an app. You do it or don't do it. It's called My Human Design app, and it's free to everybody. I make nothing on this. My Human Design. It's an app you can download, choose to engage, choose not to. But it was just a fun little thing. And what I also liked about it is they will read you your results. So you can listen to a woman with some accent. I think it's Australian. I, I've, it's been a few days since I've done it. So you don't even have to sit there and look at your phone. You can just press play while you're doing your other thing. So, you know, for we podcasty people, for we audio people, that was kind of a fun one. So, I will consider nice doing diversion. this. Nice Dear diversion. listener, you heard it. If you, A, want to take it and tell us about it, I'm considering it because kind of like religion – I mean, I would need to see a literal burning bush. I would need to see, I don't know, a woman come down who hasn't shaved her legs ever. Like, I, I would need proof. I'm a proof kind of girl. What's that well, kind of proof? <laughs> well, I don't think, I don't really see God as the bearded guy on the chair. I mean, could be a woman, could like could be nothing at all and something humans rely on to bring sense to morality and then take it the wrong direction and fuck up society could be anything gotcha i got you it's just a little side side note over there um so dear listener if you want to take that she said it's my my human design my human design is the app and i'm sure there's a million of them that's just the one that i tried human design is evidently a thing it's like saying numerology for people who know it's a thing. Oh, I see. And I didn't realize. So, and it's incredibly complicated. And I'm sure the deeper you get into it, somebody's going to have, you know, a a cart for checkout. And I'm sure there's also going to be, you know, some space aliens involved. So at that point, I would say back away quickly, running opposite direction. Run. Yeah, right. Yeah. Don't, Everything don't purchase. My don't does. do. Don't get that. Get diggy do. Get diggy do. But it just hey. felt a little bit to me like Marvel backstory for you. It's like, oh, so that's why I, I sort of like these pretend mythic things, especially when they okay. light on things that appear to Coincidentally. Fit, appear to okay. fit. Okay. Yes. Oh, you have a little bit of believing in there. Hey, I read an article called Dads on Duty. Did you read that article? I don't think I did. There are these fathers at this Louisiana high school. These kids are getting arrested. They're fighting all the time and they can't come up with a solution to keeping these kids safe, out of jail, s safe in <laughs> school. So they decided, there's like 40 of them, they've decided that they are going to take days and just be at school and walk the hallways. Oh my gosh. So they are the police, they are policing the hallways to keep everybody, I mean, these are their friends' dads. I think they're like, I think there were up to 40 guys who are doing it. And the crime rate, the... Um, expulsion rate, the trouble rate just dropped dramatically in that school. And now they're trying to spread it around everywhere. And I thought, that's fantastic. What if you don't have a dad? Like, that's fantastic. What if, like, there are a thousand ways it could go wrong. But it is something that worked in one school that I thought was so great. And then I pictured my father with his knee socks pulled up walking around to make sure that Nobody got into shit, and I thought, <laughs> that's not helpful. Kids would pick on me more, and boy, has he aged in the last six months and has gone downhill is what I started thinking. Oh, man, that took a turn, and here but I thought how it was great, be... How great is that program, Dad's on Duty? It's pretty darn great. Some of them work nights, and they just spent like four to six hours walking around the school. And they I think see what's each great other. about it is for the kids who do not have dads, or do not have the stereotypical idea of a dad or answer that however you who, who don't have the benefit of what we generalize as a dad whether or not there's a physical presence of a person in their life now they're getting the benefit at school they're the, they're the safety adopting of, it just yeah, the, they walk the in physical, they shake hands yeah, yep. it's a really nice it's a it's a really nice program you should read about it the mentorship story. yeah i love that i super it's, love it Hey, I have a couple more hours left on um, cyber shopping before small business-ish. Are you doing any of that shopping online? I am not doing it. I have to physically go. 
and I'm dreading it now that you just told me this. I physically have to go and restock. So I have to go buy things in the actual stores. <laughs> I didn't even realize that until you just said it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, well. It's okay. I'll, I'll mask up. I'll bulk up. I'll get my knife out. I'll be ready. Dear listener, thank you for coming back out to see us, to hear us, to smell us. Oh, my God. I'm so glad you can smell us. I did work out this morning. <laughs> and this podcast, smell a vision is not happening. Not a, not a bestseller. So, yeah, not a bestseller. No. Uh, we love you. We're grateful for you and hope that you had a great holiday. Tell us, don't forget to write us and tell us something that's mocking you that you started <laughs> in your home because I won't be ignored, Dan. I won't Amen. be ignored. I won't be ignored, Dan. Yes. Ooh. She's scary. Yes, <laughs> that's right. I turn the lights on and off. And with that, thank you for listening. Bye. 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 Brian. <laughs>